Welcome everyone to another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition it's Big Nose the Caveman, brought to us by Comerica and Codemasters. One of the unlicensed games available for the NES, Big Nose was one of the mascots for Codemasters and Comerica, along with one of my favorite series of all time, the Dizzy franchise. They only ended up making two games in the Big Nose franchise, and this is the first of those two. This game features a caveman while well, just trying to get his Thanksgiving dinner going. A pterodactyl flies by and Big Nose wants to cook it up for Thanksgiving dinner. While it may not be the most stellar of the NES platformers, this is one of my favorite of the Codemasters Comerica games. So here we go with Big Nose the Caveman for the NES. When you start up the game, you get a little bit of a cutscene of Big Nose outside his cave, and then you see that, well, he wants to eat the pterodactyl for Thanksgiving dinner. When the game starts off, you get to see some pretty colorful graphics, as well as overall cool design of having the dinosaur bones already easily placed in the ground below. Being a caveman, Big Nose uses his mighty club in order to take out enemies, though this does, of course, have a very short range. The good thing about it, though, is it does have a really large hitbox allowing you to easily hit enemies. But you also have great upgrades that you're able to pick up rocks in order to throw them at enemies as well. When you pick up one set of rocks, you then launch one rock. Then when you pick up another, you'll launch two. And finally, you can launch up to three rocks at one time with each and every one of the swings of your club. The game starts off on Paradise Island, and it's broken up into multiple different levels before you're able to complete it and move on to the next island. You'll notice that I already defeated the first level and first boss, but don't worry, we'll have multiple opportunities to defeat the same bosses over and over throughout the game, which is one of the disappointing things, but overall, not too bad. Having the throwing rocks is definitely essential, as you'll be able to easily hit tons of enemies from a far distance. Big Nose defaultly only has one hit point, so when you get hit, you end up losing a life. However, when you pick up the rocks, you're able to take hits. You'll of course lose your upgrade, but at least you'll stay alive. Now you may notice I'm also collecting lots of bones throughout the game, and the bones are actually currency for the game. Here is that rematch against the Triceratops. For the boss battle, all you have to do is hit him once, jump over him, he'll go to the opposite side, hit him again, he'll retreat, jump over him once again and hit him again as he's on the far right once again, and he'll be taken care of. He'll get a little bit more health as we go, however, it's still the same battle every time you fight him. After defeating him in the next level, we also are then introduced to the shops for the first time. When you're given the option to go to one of three different shops, they actually all have different items. The center shop contains these spells, and these spells can actually be used to help you out, such as the Quake spell, the Jump spell, or the Stun spell. There's also very valuable upgrades, such as being able to swing the club faster, as well as the Stone Feet upgrade, which allows you to actually jump on enemies similar to other mini platformers, especially Mario. We'll be getting many of these upgrades throughout the game, of course. For the most part, it is a very simplistic platformer, and there's not a whole lot of difficulty, with most of the range of difficulty being when you lose all your upgrades, or trying to jump over some of the longer gaps in the game. Here we meet up with another dinosaur who will launch fireballs, but he doesn't move, so just keep firing rocks at him when you can, and jump over the few fireballs he's able to fire out. Once he's taken care of, we move on to the fourth level of Paradise Island. You also get a nice little counter at the bottom of how many miles that you've traveled as Big Nose during the adventure. There is a little bit of a variety to the levels, but after you play for a little while and go to some of these different islands, you'll notice that some of the level designs are basically the same from previous levels. But it doesn't take away too much from the game. We're introducing some spider enemies here, and also the concept of actually being able to jump on top of platforms in order to reach other parts of levels. Then we easily climb over that mountain and drop down the other side in order to continue on the stage. This will become a common concept throughout the game of being able to actually make it to the ends of areas and having to either jump up the platforms or drop down into certain holes in order to move on. Here we're introduced to the scorpion boss for the first time. 
Now this guy is similar to that other dinosaur, however he takes up more space. Keep launching rocks at him and he'll fire a little bit of fireballs from his tail. Pretty much the same exact speed as that previous dinosaur and not too much more challenging. The next level is a cloud theme stage. This is also the first scrolling level of the game. It's automatically of course scrolling and you'll actually have to keep up of course so you don't end up getting pushed down into some of the pits below. There's also an introduction of enemies attacking you from behind, so be careful and don't hug the wall too much on the left side, because an enemy may end up popping out at you. You're able to turn around while you're on ground, however, you'll be introduced to a new concept soon, and you unfortunately won't be able to turn around during those particular levels. At the end, it's time for a new boss introduction. This guy will fly up and down and come at you in pretty much the same pattern each time he's going to be doing so. Get used to this pattern pretty quickly and be able to hit him with your rocks just a few times, jumping over him when he dives down directly towards you, and you'll easily be able to defeat him. Once he's done, we move on to the next level, the fifth level of Paradise Island. However, we're going to stop by the shop first, and I'm just going to pick up the stun spell as well as hard feet, which allows me to jump on the enemies. We're then introduced to the flying levels for the first time. By swinging his club over his head, Big Nose can actually float, or levitate, or fly of some sort. Either way, while in the air, of course, you're able to still attack and fire rocks. However, you're going to have to avoid all enemies as well as giant whales in the water that are shooting out their water spouts. You'll have volcanoes later on in the game and some other perils as well. The only difficult part about these levels is keeping yourself afloat by holding in the jump button non-stop, and as well as being able to get past the enemies that attack you from behind. When they come at you, you'll have to dodge around them because you won't be able to turn around and actually attack them. These levels are actually a little bit fun and actually a nice little change of pace to the overall game. After this whale, it's time for the next boss fight. For this guy, he'll pop out of the water and you'll have to hit him, of course, with the rocks, but he's very low to the ground. Drop down on the far left side and attack him with your rocks. Once he goes underneath the water, watch out as he'll pop up on the left side, but then be ready once he goes down again as he'll be back on the right side and you'll be able to easily attack him once again with those rocks. Once he's been defeated, you get a little cutscene. After the short little cutscene, we're now on Monster Island, Island number 2. As you can see, the background has changed a little bit, and the levels are a little bit tougher from here on out, I think. Of course, besides just the change of scenery, you're also introduced to some new enemy types as well, including these birds that will quickly fly out from behind. They'll come straight at you, but if you're able to just duck underneath of them, get underneath of them, they'll quickly fly up into the air. You can see here I was able to crush this rock, destroying it, causing an earthquake to happen for a short period of time. Also here are some turtle enemies as well as fish enemies jumping out of the water. After this branching little path, you're introduced to another new boss. This one's similar to the last boss, however he's stationary, but you also have a hummingbird-like bird flying around trying to drill at you. Jump over him when he swoops down and keep firing directly at the dinosaur. Once you've delivered enough hits to the dino, you'll defeat him and move on to the next level. The shop on the far right side has your upgrades such as double clubs, fast clubs, auto club, or fast stoning, which I definitely recommend picking up at least fast stoning as well as maybe the double club. 
As you can see with fast stoning, you have a giant increase in the amount of attacks you can do really quickly. Then we're introduced to the cave levels for the first time. These are the only kind of maze-like levels, and they really are straightforward. You'll just have to jump up some rocks sometimes in order to get up to higher platforms. A lot of these levels contain large amounts of water below or lava, and once you're able to get through though, it's time to battle the boss. Get used to the pattern of this guy. He will do the same pattern every single time you fight him, and you fight him about four or five times throughout the game. This guy will always pop out and go through the same holes in the same pattern each time you fight him, so stand out wherever you need to and keep firing those rocks at him in order to get rid of him. Once he's defeated, of course, we move on to level 3 of Monster Island. You'll have to make some long jumps over the top area here. Be careful when dropping down here that you're able to land on the turtle safely, so you continue over to the right. At the end of this area is a rematch against this boss. Once again, watch out for the bird or hummingbird as it flies over and keep firing directly at the dino. The fourth level of Monster Island is another cave theme level. This one a little bit longer than the previous one. Head all the way over to the right and then jump up and you'll actually find a hidden shop. If you need anything, you can buy it, but once you exit, you'll be able to continue on in the level climbing up to the right once again to go off screen. This is one of those levels where you may have to drop down through some pits that, though they are safe, is always kind of a gamble in your mind. However, you'll easily be able to drop down, land safely below, and then be able to keep moving through this large cave. Here you'll have a couple of big jumps over some lava. Be sure to jump up here and then over the side to jump and continue before you make it to the boss chamber. Here once again he'll do the same pattern as before, so keep attacking him on that left side. He'll then pop down on the right and you're easily able to attack him and then he's going to come up through the center, so be careful and jump over him if you're hanging out on that far left platform. Once he comes down for that fourth time I'm able to deliver those final hits to him and complete the level. Next up, we thankfully have a little bit of a different looking level compared to the last four stages being either the red background and the cave. You have some birds that will attack you from behind during this stage, so be careful and be sure to jump over them. I have trouble landing on them and actually defeating them even with the hard feet, so I wouldn't attempt trying to actually jump on these guys. Be sure to climb up here and then drop down left of the cloud in order to continue on in the stage. You have the new snake-like worm enemies that will come at you, but these guys are easily taken care of with rock throws, and eventually we will make it over to the far right in time to battle another scorpion boss. Another pretty simplistic boss battle is we're able to easily jump over his fireballs that he launches at us and keep firing those rocks. This level has a decent amount of turtles that are going to be in the water, so quickly jump on their backs and run along them, so you'll be able to get it to the opposite side before they end up sinking down and cause you to lose a life that way. This level is definitely a little bit of an endurance run as far as the jumping and platforming on the turtle's backs go. Then we'll have another boss fight against the hummingbird-like enemy and the dinosaur, and once he's done we move on to the final part of Monster Island.
Here, in this flying level, we're introduced to the volcanoes for the first time. These volcanoes shoot fireballs straight up into the air, and while they're easy to dodge in this first one, later on they're going to be a really big pain, especially in the final flying level of the game. Also, be sure to avoid actually running into any part of the volcano mountain itself as well, as that will also cause an instant death. After a large series of the volcanoes, it will open up a little bit more, and you'll have just some of the whales on the bottom, so stay elevated, of course, still at the top of the screen, though. You always, though, want to be hovering a little bit down below when possible, just in case something does pop up from directly behind you. You definitely can't, like, just hold the button and look away from the screen for a few seconds, as you may end up getting hit. Time for the next boss fight. For this guy, we're doing the same thing as we did before. Float down on the far left though this time, and if you hug the left wall far enough, you'll be able to hit the guy even though he pops up on that left side of the screen and tries to lunge at you, he won't be able to hit you, and as long as you hit him with a few rocks, he'll be taken care of. Next up is Terror Island, the ice-themed island of the game. However, you're not having to worry about slipping and sliding anywhere, but the changing backgrounds and all is a nice change of pace. A pretty easy level to get you introduced to Terror Island, as you'll just have the kind of normal variety of enemies you've already been fighting throughout the game. So just keep running, jumping, and firing non-stop, you'll have no trouble here. At the end, we have a rematch against the Triceratops from the first island of the game. This guy does take a few more hits, but overall he's the same difficulty as he always was. Next up, level 2 of Terror Island introduces the main themed stage for this island, and that being the giant cold mountain theme. There's a lot of platforms here, some of which you'll have to be careful with, because you'll have to jump up to higher ones in order to make longer jumps. As well as you will have to do this here, where you jump down to this bottom platform and wait for it to rise up, and that'll allow you to make the jump over to the far right. If you don't land on that platform, you won't be able to make it from just the normal sitting standard platform that's there. At the end of the area is another new boss. This is the Sabertooth Tiger. He starts off from jumping from the right to the left, and then he'll continue doing so but making shorter and shorter jumps. However, he's easy to hit, and only takes about 4 or 5 hits with your rocks, and you should be able to get rid of them. Once he's done, we move on to the third level of Terror Island. The third level is the cave-themed stage for Terror Island. There's some lava here that you'll have to jump over, as well as an introduction to frog enemies, but more importantly, the bat enemies. While the bats coming at you from the front, of course, are easy to tangle with, however, the ones from behind like to come at you. You'll have to drop down into a couple of different holes throughout these different areas in order to get the gate to disappear slightly to the right, so you'll be able to continue on. Of course, figuring out that the first time may take a second or two. But just like all the caves, there is pretty much one singular path you can take, however, you'll have to jump multiple times through different screens. Be very careful here with all the different lava jumps, and be sure to climb up to the top here before attempting to make the jump all the way to the right to get to the boss chamber. 
Here, you're introduced to the boss once again, and this guy, of course, will be doing the same pattern as he always does, and is pretty easy to deal with. He does take a decent amount of hits still, but once you're able to defeat him, we can move on to the next level. Up next is another one of those mountain-themed levels, so some more tough platforming, but overall the enemies aren't too bad here. You'll have to make a leap of faith off the far right here in order to drop down, and once you do so, you'll go to another screen where you're just falling. Thankfully, there's no enemies to hurt you during these segments, but you'll have to do this actually four times in this level. If you're wondering, the bones start in the center on the first time, then they move to the left on the second, and then on the third time, they will actually alternate if you're trying to collect all the bones while falling. After we jump off to the side for the fourth and thankfully final time during this level, once we land, we just have to continue over a little bit over to the right, and it's time to battle another one of the Sabertooth Tigers. I just attack him while he's in the air, or when he lands safely on the ground, and once you've delivered enough hits, well done Big Nose, and move on to the next level. Next up is another one of the scrolling themed stages. This ice scrolling theme stage can be a little bit difficult just because of the scrolling, but thankfully the turtle type enemies you can easily jump on if you have hard feet or just attack them with the normal projectile weapon. When you have one of the guys attack you from that left side though, be sure to quickly turn around and swing the club so you'll be able to actually hit them. Of course, being a scrolling theme level makes the level a bit tougher, but thankfully, it's pretty much flat during this stage, so as long as you're able to avoid the enemies, it's not too much trouble. Eventually though, you will make it to a couple of platforms you'll have to jump through, and you get another new boss, the Giant Fish Boss. If you're standing on one of the platforms, stand directly in the center. If the fish jumps over one of those platforms, he'll go over your head, but only if you're in the direct center. Being too close to the left or right, he may end up clipping you. Once he's taken care of though, you move on to the flying stage of Terror Island. During this level, of course, we have some new enemies. We have some bigger pterodactyls, but not the pterodactyl that we're actually trying to chase down. As well as we have some jumping shark enemies. And while some new stuff is introduced here, this is still a lot easier than the previous flying level in my opinion. After dodging like a hundred sharks, you'll then be through some of the more classic enemies we've been fighting here, such as the whales. After a pretty long flying segment, we finally make it to the boss. Same guy as always, as we'll be able to hug that left wall and hit him multiple times with the rocks in order to get rid of him and move on to the fourth and final island of the game.
The fourth island in the game is Chaos Island. Now this island starts off with one of the more basic levels like we have done with some of the previous islands as you just kind of have some of the default enemies we've already been dealing with before. Pretty much mostly a flat stage, a little bit of platforming, but as long as you have one of your rocks that you're able to throw, you should be able to hit all enemies just directly in front of you. You may have to jump from time to time, or just do a nicely timed club swing in order to hit the big giant bugs that are coming up from behind. Once they're taken care of though, you move on to the actual boss here, which is a rematch against the Triceratops guy. He moves a little bit quicker than he has in previous levels, but you should have no problem being able to jump over him at this point. Next up is another cave themed level, watching out for lava as well as some of the other normal enemies and just waiting for the right opportunities and making sure you drop down the correct pits so you don't end up losing lives. Here's another one of those times you'll have to drop down to the pit to actually hit a surprise hidden button in order to get rid of the wall just to the right of it. Here you're going to have to wait for the elevator to rise up to the top and then you can climb out, jumping over a giant pool of lava before you make it to the actual boss fight. Now this guy of course is the same as he's always been, just get ready to attack him first on the left, then on the far right, and then he'll of course come up the direct center. If you're not able to deliver enough hits by then though, he will come down one more time, easily hit him for the final couple of hits, and move on to the next level. Next up is a giant tree themed stage, as there's a lot of platforming on the giant trees themselves. You also have a ton of bird enemies attacking you from behind here. Just keep moving quickly and attack the birds directly in front and be sure to either go underneath or jump over the birds attacking you from the left side. Also be sure before you attempt a large jump over one of the big gaps that you actually have enough space and enough length of the platform so you'll be able to actually make that jump. At the end it's time to battle the giant purple dinosaur again who we haven't seen for a while. This guy will fire out two fireballs at a time. One, then a little bit of a break and then another one right after that. You should be able to actually jump in between the two fireballs. Since we've now seen everything the game has to offer, there's nothing really new here. Just be careful of your jumping between the trees, but it's pretty simple platforming at this point. Be careful here, of course, as you'll be dive bombed right away as soon as you get to the boss, but just keep attacking the dinosaur like always, having to jump over the guy a couple of times maybe, before you're able to deliver enough hits to defeat the dinosaur. Next up is another mountain themed level that we saw in the previous island, however, except it's not ice themed this time around. However, the concept is pretty much the same. You're going to have a lot of platforms here and a large amount of gaps that you're going to have to jump over. There will also, of course, be some guys attacking from behind. Be sure to land on this platform down below so it rises up, giving you enough space so you can actually jump over to the far right and land safely.
When we make it to the boss, it's time to battle the Sabertooth Tiger. Just watch out as he jumps back and forth, and you shouldn't have too much trouble here in delivering those few hits you need to. Next up is another one of those jungle themed levels, so really nothing new here either. Now Big New seemed to be a franchise that Codemasters wanted to keep going. They made a sequel to this for the NES, Big News Freaks Out, which involves Big News and his new invention, the skateboard with a wheel, as well as they actually were going to port this game over to the Sega Genesis or Master System at one point. However, the game was never finished and actually was a prototype released later on. However, the prototype was under actually a different name. When you make it to the end of the level, it's time to battle the giant scorpion one more time. Just keep jumping over his slow moving fireballs and keep launching out all those rocks and the scorpion will go down just as easy as always. Next up is the final level of the game. Now this being the final flying level, this is the toughest so far in the game. Start off by hugging the left wall but just be slightly lower than the volcano itself so you can avoid the flying enemy as it goes immediately over your head. This way you preserve any power-ups you had in the previous level. The volcanoes themselves are rather difficult to get around as they spit the fireballs out pretty quickly here. If the volcano is too close to the top of the screen though when it launches a fireball though, since the fireball never falls back down, it doesn't seem to ever fire another one out. So you only have to worry about fireballs from the ones that are low to the ground. This can still be challenging though and you want to keep as many of your power-ups as possible while traveling through. Of course you also have to be very careful of the actual mountains themselves so don't hug the ground too low as you're also trying to avoid the flying enemies that are going to be coming at you from both the right and left. Sometimes of course as you can see in wave-like patterns. Be very careful here as you'll have to hug the ceiling basically to avoid these two mountains. Once the screen opens up again it's time for the boss fight himself. Since you can't fire backwards you can only attack the guy when he's in the front. So stay about in the middle of the screen and dodge in and out of his different movements. Either he'll go directly across the screen or he may move in a circular pattern. But either way, just stay around so that you can easily maneuver around, and then he'll repeat the pattern over and over again. It will take a decent amount of hits since this is the final boss of the game. However, once you're able to deliver the final hit to him, you can sit back and enjoy the ending to Big Nose the Caveman. So there you have it, there's the ending to Big Nose the Caveman. Thanksgiving was saved as you end up eating the enemy you just took out. You're then able to put in your name for the high score list here. Of course that will be erased as soon as you turn off the game, but it's still a nice little thing at the end. And then the game goes right back to the start and you can start the game all over again. But with that, that's going to wrap up this edition of Play It Through. I'd like to thank you for watching and of course, I hope you enjoyed.